Hey, everybody. Yeah, we just started talking. Don't worry. Um, SLP, I think you're here. Looks like you're here. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, now I can. It was saying the host is not allowing you to unmute yourself. Oh, no. I was like, so I was like, I'm gonna call you and tell you. <laughs> Oh Lord. Oh, Lord. oh we, we've done it. We're good. It worked out. Thank you for your patience. Hey, no, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we're uh guess what? Guess what we're doing today? No, this is watch me work again. And um, yay, look at everybody. Hey Carol, hey Rebecca, hey everybody, hey, look at hey Lynn, hi, hey Lynn. Larry's back, and all these other fabulous people. Look at these beautiful people. Hi, we're back. Jim's back, Lou's back, everybody's back. Um, it's Watch Me Work. Uh, those of you who don't know what we're doing, uh, let me just tell you. So we've been doing this for like 10, 11, 12 years. We forgot. Um, Carol, will, Carol would know how long we've been doing it. We started out in the lobby of the public theater. It's called Watch Me Work. The me in the title is you. It's experimental theater. <laughs> oh my God, I know. And it's free because it's experimental. And this is where we hang out with you and we talk about your work and your creative process. That's what it's all about. So um, uh, we want to say thank you to Howl Round, who has been hosting us, but especially during, uh, you know, when we got went into lockdown and we were doing it like five days a week for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And, um, and the public theater, thank you, uh, Team Audrey and the public theater for hosting us, for keeping it going, because it's now that we can meet in person again, we realize that meeting on Zoom is so much more better. Um, and we just do what we do every time we meet. We, we work together for 20 minutes and then uh, I take your questions about your work and your creative process. Um, and, and, and Audrey will tell us how to, how to ask a question. Right? Is that what I'm supposed to that's say? That's right. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Uh, well done. Um, so, if you want to, if you're inside of the Zoom and you want to ask a question, all you need to do is raise your hand, um, and you do that by going to the reactions button, likely at the bottom of your screen. If you're on a desktop or a laptop, and the top of your iPad click raise your hand um, and we will uh, we don't necessarily go in any particular order so we'll call on people and we try and get to as many people as we can um, and if you are watching the live stream you can uh, tweet at us at at watch me work slp with the hashtag howlround h-o-w-l-r-o-u-n-d um, or you can also write into the public theaters uh, facebook or instagram and we will take questions that way um, and that's sort of it sort of it that's pretty much what we do. Um, hmm. Yes. Okay. So I have my timer <laughs> and I'm going to turn it on and then uh, we're going to work. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mo.
All right. All righty. Perfect timing. Here we are. Okay. Ho hope uh, you guys got some some work done um, or something. So uh, anybody with a question, Audrey can call on you. Yeah, it looks like Lou's here with a question. Go for it. Hey, it's hey, so Lou. great to see you all, to be Hello. here with you. Thank you so much. Um, just to say ahead of time, I have conjured SL, what would SLP do so many times since I've seen you last. So thank you. Aww. I have my timer over here. So Oh, thank you. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm, it's, it's been great. Um, so it's great to be here. But I will ask the question. Here's my question. Um, I'm, I want to ask about the balance between outlining your vision for your story versus mm -hmm. being inspired and energized by inspiration as you're working. Mm -hmm. um, I was really bound to an outline for like a year that I had mm -hmm. imagined and I was torturing myself and mm -hmm. I have recently kind of set it aside and it's not that I'm not abiding the outline but I'm breaking it and having the most fun I've had <laughs> but I kind of don't know where I'm ending up so I just was curious to talk about the balance of those things mm -hmm. and, and how you might see it or mm -hmm. think about it mm -hmm. as you said I love the question I mean I'm taking I would take the cues the clues from an answer that I might offer based on two things you said, uh, darn, and I forgot, but torture, I think, did you use the word torture? And yeah, then yeah. you use the word like joyous or fun or yes. happy. Okay. So, um, so since you never know how something's going to end up anyway, right? If you're having, if you feel like you're being tortured and only you would know, you know, cause it's your process and you're working. If it feels that awful, and doing something different or doing the process differently feels joyful, then I would go with the more joyful experience regardless of where you're going with it. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, that's when you say it, it's like, well, is this even a question? <laughs> like, why am I asking well, this question? But, but I hear you. Yeah. Cause perhaps, I mean, are you asking um, what will get you to where you want to go? with more um what is a more sort of time-tested way to get where you want to go and if the outline is the way then you were willing to endure the torture might that be what you yeah i think i thought it was the right way and i guess if i'm being honest i think having had the outline for a while even though it was torture is informing the fun mm -hmm. <laughs> like it mm -hmm. hasn't gone totally out the window it's still mm -hmm. exists in this form it's just that it's not by the book you know now I'm not by the book by the beat and uh, there's some new beats and some new ideas right. and I just, I, what I'm trying to avoid too I'll just say is I just don't want to go forever like I want to complete my project that I have in mind and I feel right. like part of what I might be doing is just changing course or something, but I don't, I don't know if that's true. So I just was mm -hmm. just trying to the balance mm -hmm. between inspiration mm -hmm. and yeah, lying, lying to yourself yeah, yeah. about where you're going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It's hard to know. It's hard to know. I think one of, one of the best ways to maybe gauge that is to something we talk about in here a lot, set yourself some kind of finish line, you mm -hmm. know, if you were running the New York marathon a couple of weeks ago with all those people who were running and I was not among them, but um, they were out there running, you know, and they would just be running unless there were, had been a finish line. <laughs> They'd be still, some would still be running and they would be, am I bullshitting myself? I haven't seen my family in weeks. Right. What am I doing out here in the streets of New York city? Right. But since they set themselves a finish line and they, uh, everybody agreed on it, Mm. everybody involved they call it a marathon and there they go you know so you, you call it a finish even if it's like i'm gonna get a chapter done or i'm gonna get a scene done or i'm gonna you know get five pages done by can't you can it can be any kind of finish yeah. line you know set yourself a series of finish lines and then you'll see whatever method even if you're crawling on the marathon you still know that this is what i'm doing you know so set yourself a series of finish lines and that's the way you can gauge whether or not you're bullshitting yourself your method of getting to the finish line 
doesn't really matter. Yeah. Right. If I mean, and if you want to get to the finish line, that's what's important. And for those of you who don't aren't interested in getting to a finish line and just are interested in getting into your work, then the finish line method is not appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in seeing, then 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 if you want to get done, get done. Awesome. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Thanks. Good question, Thank though. Good question. Thanks, Lou. All right. Um, up next, we've got Mac. Go for it, Mac. Hey, Mac. Okay. Hi. I really had not form. Well, I was trying to formulate a question, and then I was so uh, intrigued by um, I've forgotten her name, but her question about finish lines and outlines. Um, well, I started writing a little play when when we were doing this the way I usually write, which is by the seat of my pants. Mm -hmm. I get a character doing something and then it just goes from there. And um, it's kind of a dystopian thing. And it's set in this woman's apartment and she's in there by herself thinking that there's been a major attack or something and there's sirens and she's trapped and she's trying to call for help to be evacuated or something. So the whole thing is a conversation between her and her phone. And I know if I was doing this as a film, if I was trying to write film, I could I could actually show the phone screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's a place where I do need the phone is is responding to her, but it's it's a recorded message. So is it OK to just do this with verbally like she's having this conversation with the phone? you know, and she goes mm -hmm. out and finally looks out the windows and sees billowing smoke and hears mm -hmm. sirens. And this is whatever it is, is escalating. And mm -hmm. I do have an idea to finish it. I just mm -hmm. didn't quite get there. Uh -huh. But, uh -huh. So in a play format, how do I handle the phone? I mean, it's a, it's a so, character play. So is it a phone? Is it a, like a smartphone or is it a rotary phone? What kind of phone are you talking about? So the so the the phone could light up and and go dark when it it quits talking. She's getting very frustrated because she's trying to get through, and it'll come on, and she'll get this garbled message, and then it'll click off when she starts talking. So I don't know if I just do that mm -hmm. with lines. yeah, or you could you I could do that with okay. The, the phone is goes dark, and then all of a sudden it comes back and somebody's talking and she's suddenly, Oh, I'm back here. Please don't go. And blah, blah, blah. So, um, right. Right. Maybe this should be a film instead of a play. I, don't know. I mean, it, it could, it could, it could be either. I mean, what's the most important thing is her relationship with whoever it is on the other end of the conversation, whether it's a recorded message, whether it's yes. something she's trying to get through. I mean, that's more important than, what you show, I mean, so once you establish that, Mac, and it sounds like you've got a really good handle on that, you could show it in a variety of ways. I mean, you could have a, a screen in the back that, that lights up like the phone, you know, and I mean, uh, you could have a variety of, of I mean, that's a sort of more of a, a set designer would come out, come up with a really cool way of showing the visuals um, okay. for you. But that's not to say we don't want to jump over the, the reality that the most important, more, more interesting and more important than showing the phone kind of thing is that intense relationship that she would have. Yeah. With and she's other. getting more and more frustrated and freaking mm -hmm. out and so forth mm -hmm. because all she's getting are different recorded messages. Oh, well, yes. So, you know, like, please stay on the line. Someone will be with you shortly. And this sure. is just uh, constantly sure. you know, at this yes. point. Oh. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm trying to escalate it. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I just, I just wondered if her screaming into the phone and maybe throwing it out the window in the end, I don't know what's going to happen, but sure. as I haven't that gotten the be... yet, I'm almost, I'm almost there. There you go. <laughs> I'm sounds like like fun. Really fast and see if there's anything and then go back mm -hmm. and figure out what it that was. That sounds cool. That sounds mm -hmm. cool, Mac. Yeah, totally. Larry said something in the chat about it. I it just flashed on there. Larry, you want to say something about that? I don't, I can't, I'm. Oh. Did Larry, Larry had some, let's see. Uh, yeah, said. did you go, did you get the unmute? I direct I did. Plays on oh, yeah, great. I did, thanks for summoning me. I was mm -hmm. just going to say that as a director, I'm always, you know, we do a lot of um, 
we do a lot of interesting behaviors while being on the phone. So I usually, as a director, when there's a moment mm-hmm. on a play, I usually try to figure out what what's a revelation of behavior. Like what's the revelation mm-hmm. of the behavior during the phone call that mm-hmm. can be much more expressionistic. And I rarely have people like really pick up a phone when they're on the phone. Mm-hmm. So there's usually ways to indicate the phone, but I'm always sort of interested in what does the phone call express? So yeah. I just want to say as when I get a play as a director and there's a phone call, I mess with it. So um, yeah, <laughs> better or worse. Um, I'm, so I'm, I always think about like, what's the, what's the expressionistic behavior that um, reveals something. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had all these little things that she's doing and showing her frustration so forth, but I think cool. we have to go further. So. Cool, cool. Yeah. Sounds cool. Huh? Thanks, Mac. Cool. Awesome. Okay. All right. Up next, we've got Raven. Go for it, Raven. Hi, everybody. Hi, Susan. Hi. Moore. Hi. Great hat. Thank you. Yeah, so cute. I'm so excited we're, we're back. Attention I didn't know. Until the the oh, I'm sorry. The cafe will be closing in 25 minutes. We know where you are. I'm at the drama bookshop (laughs) and they're announcing the the closing of the cafe. Um, So I'm just gonna, my question is, can you share some words on the producing process? Um, I wrote a jazzical and I got um, a really like fancy, you know, reading in Vermont. And then I brought it to New York and did a, um, a, a private reading where I invited, you know, producers and collaborators and, and things like that. Um, and it, it, it went really well. And so now I guess I'm in the, the, the process of when I just started writing something new. And I guess I'm also in the place where like I've never had to like juggle the plays in this way. And then I'm still, I don't want to like neglect the jazzical because I do think that's also a timely piece and that needs to um, live now. Um, I feel like all my work is in that way. And so one of the, uh, part of this question as well is like, I also know like the playwright that I think, you know, would be the perfect mentor um, for my, for my play. Um, and so um, how would you, I guess, advise me to approaching um, this playwright and uh, also just like this murky part of the like producing process where like there's a lot of traction people are so, super excited and then like I'm the you know I'm a co-producer as well and I'm just like you know okay now I'm here with it alone again and like <laughs> I don't know it was congratulations on writing something and having a lot of people excited about it that's really really wonderful yay and and you know I mean you you have had a couple of questions I mean the the, the producing and the things I would say just you know, what are the next steps? Ask the producers, you know, other than yourself, of course, what the next steps would be and just try to keep, you know, it's like airplanes, you know, you've got more than one project. So you're going to have to be sort of um, air traffic control, right? Because there's more than one plane in the air, right? So you're, and that's your job to keep them um, all sort of going in the direction that they want to go in, but not colliding with each other or getting into each other's way, right? So you're just going to have to stagger yourself and producing is a different kind of energy, as you know, than writing as, you know, so um, just set aside a little time every day to do maybe the, the, to keep each project going, you know, kind of divide up your days or the, the time you have to work to keep each of your projects going. That's, I find that to be super helpful. Um, yeah, the, the approaching the mentor, I don't know, different different mentors need to be approached in different ways. So I, I am not really sure about that. I wouldn't, uh, I mean, maybe if you know them, you know, uh, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Different people, you, I can be approached you, in different ways. I guess, how do you, you know, what makes you uh, look twice when someone approaches you for mentorship? Because the thing about mentorship too, it's, 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 essence you know it's it's not something that's just like okay we can work together it's it's more about spirit and alignment in that way at mm-hmm. least for 
for, from my mm -hmm. perspective, but I'm just curious what what makes you um, want to invest in someone's work? Well, um, I'm uh, maybe it's a good thing. I'm kind of random. Here I am investing, showing up, inviting uh, people who pretty much most of them I, I did not know at all when we started this. Um, most of you, I, you know, I might know, I might not know. Um, so uh, this is a form of mentorship. I have different, I have non-standard forms of mentorship being um, kind of a out of the box kind of individual. So I start watch me work and I just open the door and see who comes in. So my criteria for mentorship are, are you going to show up? You're going to do the work. If you show up, I show up. Um, I also teach at NYU, which is a more formal, you know, thing for people who go to NYU. And that's kind of a more formal academia conservatory kind of experience. Um, and that's NYU does the selection there. So I think, I think every, like I said, every mentor has kind of a different, a different thing. And you know, if I said, like, when you meet your mentor, you have to wear a great hat, you know, you might find a mentor who hates hats. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I wouldn't want to give you that advice, not knowing, not knowing uh, much more about it than just, um, but I, I think in lieu of a mentor, um, wor um, work is a great mentor. Mm -hmm. Doing the work is, a, is the best mentor. Um yeah, that's really the best. You can learn so much from uh, the, the page, you know, back in the day when we had just pages. You can learn a lot from the empty page and from facing the page and from just going to going to see plays, reading plays, reading novels, you know, filling the well of your spirit with literature. Um, I must say that you like you just popped up back into my my sphere and last weekend I was I've been Paula Vogel's boot camp and we've spoke your name and work so much and all of a sudden I didn't know that this was starting again so it's kind of cool there you go but there you go so much for all that you just shared I'll, you know, oh thanks Raven thank you enjoy the drama bookshop that's a great bookshop I haven't been up there in ages so oh, glad no you're there come by and see the new it's it's wonderful yeah Right awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Raven. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we are going to go to Kimmy next. Go for hey, it. Kimmy. Hey, okay. Kimmy. Hi. Hi. It's, Hi. Thank you so much Hi. for being back. Good to I see miss you. you so much. Thank you. Um, I appreciate did you have funny project. internet years ago? I mean, years ago, gee. Whenever we did, you have some funny, some funky internet, or is that my imagination? Did you? No, it was. Yeah. And, yeah. Was, Melania is remembering. Hey, Melania. Yeah. yeah, you were always outside, right? And it was like, ah, my internet. Yeah, she was she was outdoors, right? You guys remember? Okay, okay. How you doing? I'm well. I yeah. just got back from a five month uh, cross country mm -hmm. trip, driving around in my car, and um, nice. I yeah, I had a lot of amazing experiences. Where'd and you go? Where'd you go? I I went to about uh, ten different um, national parks. Oh, I. Good. I took a I took a an, a helicopter ride around Mount Rushmore. Wow. Uh, that was really exciting. Wow. I for the first time oof, for the first time in sixty years, I heard my mother's name because I'm adopted and I didn't know what what her name was. And oh. I got to see pictures oh. of family members for the first time. And um, oh. I actually look like somebody. It was pretty amazing to. So it's been a big, oh. it's been a big trip with a lot. Of <laughs> and uh, I've only been home a week. So there's still a lot of processing um, uh -huh. that I'm doing. And one of the uh, one day I was hiking with a fellow who's also a writer and a stand up comic. And mm -hmm. I told him about my play. Um, it's called Waste Management. And it's, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm from New Jersey. What else would you call your play? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good so it's loosely based on my life um in that the realities are child sexual uh abuse um stand-up comedy uh dead father love of jazz those are kind of the things that uh are the truth about me and the one thing that i that i did with the character was um 
to show her arc, she mm -hmm. uh, struggles with uh, substance issues. Mm -hmm. And my friend um, said to me, do you have that issue? And I said, no, I've never been drunk in my life. Mm -hmm. I only took mitral because I like you, you know, like, <laughs> you know, uh, drugs have never been my thing. And he says, well, I think it's more interesting if you show that character not using those crutches mm -hmm. and getting through her abuse. She, he said, we've already seen, you know, that story because most people that go through what I've been through turn to those um tools will say to help you get through right because you think it's a tool at first right you need to numb the pain or whatever mm -hmm. but he says it's much more interesting if we see the character go through everything without the use of alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and i went okay now how do i show her arc now how do i show because like seeing myself for the first time at 60, I don't see how I moved through my life surviving other than the need to just keep moving forward. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's too much of a trope to have her be a substance abuse in the beginning and now she's sober at the end. And I agreed with that, but now I'm just figuring out how the hell do you show somebody's arc and growth when First of all, I'm 411, so there hasn't been much growth. <laughs> I'm the same height I was as a child. <laughs> so I'm just wondering what possible opportunities, whether they're, I mean, I have no dogma that they have to be something I actually went through, but what are other ways to show an arc uh, for dramatic purposes. And I also think that the more intense the scenes are, the jokes will land better and there'll be a better need for comic relief. So I wanted to up the ante on some of the dramatic parts of the play. And um, I know I could do that now with lighting and with sound and things like that. Everything doesn't have to be, it's theater. I can do whatever the fuck I want, right? So but I, but I just don't know how to show her arc of growth without that trope. And I was wondering if you had any helpful hints. You've lived the life though. I mean. But I'm in it though. Do you know what I mean? It's like you look in the mirror and you go, oh my God, I'm 50 pounds overweight. When did that happen? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and that and that and that and that can be I mean I think that note is really good from your friend and it sounds like it's meaningful to you so I think it's well worth considering yeah um, that's what I want um, yeah but you you yeah and and here begins the second round of work for you yeah. I mean yeah. I you know that's it's like it's like you know it's like you've got on the ruby slippers I can't tell you how to how to how to do it especially especially since you've lived the life you know? How do you, how do you, how do you examine yourself when you still feel like you're in the middle of something? Well, you, well, you, you're technically you're at a, you're somewhere, right? Like technically yeah. you weren't where you were last week. Right. 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 right? So is that interesting to the audience? If it's so subtle, well, you're you're not going to just be charting. I don't think your your journey from last week to now, are you? No, no. Okay, course. so it won't be as subtle, right? Okay. I mean, you can have to look in the mirror. I mean, you know, it's a self portrait. You got to take a look at who you're talking about. Okay. You know, yeah. I mean, and it's not as if you haven't been doing any work up until now. You've been doing a tremendous amount of work, and now begins, you know, round whatever you want to call it. Let's call it round two. You know, All right. You call it round two. And this is where you're going to have to dig, you know, deeper. You know? Yeah. Not to worry. You've lived. It's not like you're talking, you know, like we say, you know, out the side of your neck. Like you're not talking about stuff you don't know anything about. Right. You know? Yeah. But, but you, um, you're talking about stuff you do know about. So. so. All right. 
that gives me a little bit more of a handle. My friend, Paul Provenza, he told me a long time ago, we, you know, write down 12 of your shittiest stories and we'll mine that for the play. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So I guess I'll go back to those notes. There you and, go. You know, there you go. <laughs> and the bottom of the hole. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, no, no. That's it. Suffering that sounds like it. Art. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds like it, you know. Thank you so Sounds much. like exactly it. And keep checking in, you know. I will. I'll be here every day now that there I know we're back. I'm there so you grateful Thank to you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let, uh, we got about 10 minutes left. We're going to go to Melania. Hey, Melania. Hello, Susan. Hey. Are you still in Miami? I'm still in Miami. Here all I right. Am. All right, girl. It's great I to see you. I am so happy to be here. We How are your daughters? They are fine. They are at and now we don't have the Zoom school. So they are at school in the in the building. They are doing much mm. better because they have the friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, it's school and it's stuff, and we have a lot of homework and all that stuff. Yeah. But they have the friends there. It's not, it's not the same as being. But it was at the same time quite an adjustment for me because you remember that I was all day long, three different lunch times, and in all the classes, so suddenly... They went out. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great. And at the same time, I was like, whoa. Yeah. But it was very good for me because I am showing up to my work. And yeah. I can have more time to do okay. that. And I am happy uh, about that. I was contacting people here in Miami because okay. I, I, I write in Spanish. And an Spanish-speaking author that is very famous here. And he was mentoring if you want to give me some adv advice and he also said about showing up and I said that's Susan uh, so I am doing that I am doing the, the the work I am liking a lot of the things that I am doing other things remember what you taught me taught us uh, I write and I leave them you know rest and I am yeah. in waiting period of seeing if that is something or maybe mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the process what is happening to me and I would like to ask you about this is that even showing up and doing the, the, the work there is some part of me and I think that there are thoughts thinking that mm, okay your girls are at school okay everything is fine you have the time you are using the time but I don't know, maybe it, this is not serious. You know, this, this kind of, what are you doing? Are you playing? This is a joke. Mm -hmm. And I, intellectually speaking, I know it's, uh, it's serious and, mm -hmm. and I having fun at the same time. But there is this, it's like recurrent, you know? It's like, mm, what are you doing? People don't understand or nobody knows what you are doing and you are there. How can I, this is my question, how can I work on that? So this was that I know that I can control that they appear, but I know that I can maybe embrace them and say, okay, thank you. I, I don't right. know. Right. How can I do that uh, and keep working? Right, right, right. That's a great question, Melania. And, you know, I mean, we talk about like talk to the hand, you know, all these techniques we do, you know, to sort of, I mean, Sometimes I think like the a voice of, let's just say uh, th that questioning voice, the voice that is of, of, we could say maybe negativity or to encourage you to, to, to like, you want to go to a party and that's the voice that tells you stay home. You don't want to go to the party. You know what I mean? It's like Cinderella. You don't want to go to the ball. You want to stay home, don't you? Cause, cause it's safe at home. You know, it's the voice that's just trying to, it's do it's this say that's the voice that's trying to keep you safe, keep you within the, the confine, the, keep you within the, the life that you're living right now, maybe. So mm -hmm. kind of maybe reframe what that voice is trying to do um, and talk to it with an understanding that it's trying to maybe help you. I don't know. I'm just trying to say a different way because we can say talk to the hand, like shut up. I don't want to talk to you. Like that's one thing, you know, stop talking. You're trying to ruin my day. But we can also say um, 
to sort of have a, 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 a dialogue with it that's, that understands that it might be trying to help you. Um, and at the end of the day, still, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm tr- you're trying to help me, but you're more like my, you're more like the person who said, don't go to the ball, Cinderella. I mean, you know, and I'd like to go to the ball because I have this beautiful dress to wear and the coach is outside waiting. And every day you write, you get to go to the ball. You know what I mean? And that's what you're giving yourself. So you know more, you, the writer you, know, knows more than the naysayer, let's just say, the cautious one, you know? You know more because, I mean, what's the, so what if you're just playing, number one? Are you allowed to play? So, I mean, you can say that too. So what if I'm just having fun? That's true. You, you know what I mean? So what if I'm just enjoying myself? So what if I'm just experimenting? I'm allowed. You know? So just know that the, maybe the voice is coming from a place of trying to help. But it's, 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 it's not helpful. So... Um, you can also, you know, just write responses. It's like if it, the voice is coming to you while you're writing, you can just have a, a notebook and just write, oh, please, I want to keep writing. You, you can just answer it, have a running conversation with it. Um, also, when we talked about, you know, we set the timer and you write for periods of time and then whether the voice is in your head or not, you constantly sort of write quick. I, I, sometimes I write quickly and that keeps the voice, the voice is kind of slow not like a sloth, but kind of, you know, you can imagine the voice of that's that thing that's talking to you is a sloth, you know, a sloth, you know, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you can imagine. And then, then you laugh and then they have that, that face, you know, that sloth face in their hands and they're very interesting, but very slow. And they say, you're like, I already wrote this. I, I, I've been writing for 20 minutes. Shut up. You know, you know, but they're trying to help. They don't want you to get hurt out there. Mm-hmm. So we laugh at them and we just keep writing. That's great. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you. I the same. Great to see you. Yeah, yeah. Really great to see you. Everything you did for us okay. during the pandemic, the lockdown, yeah. you were a light. A light thank in you. the middle thank you very thank much you. oh thank you and so are you and so are you all we were all lights for each other weren't we kind of showing up and going we're still here we can't leave the house but we're still here <laughs> you know you really were we really were yeah. yeah so we've got like less than you know we've got about two minutes left so do we have yeah. time for one more question should we wrap it up for today and we can, we can wrap it up for today we're going to be back next week yeah we're going we to be are. back next week yeah yeah, so I just put in the chat the um, uh, link to the page on the Public Theater's website where you can see all of the dates for the rest of the year. We'll be doing every Monday from now through December 20th. Um, and in mid-December, we'll announce new dates for, for the new year. Um, but yeah, you've got all of the links to sign up for every single week on the website. Um, and uh, we We're can't here. wait to see you back. We're here. So keep, you know, keep writing, write all week. Even on Thanksgiving, you know, that it's Thanksgiving. What do we, we have so much to be thankful for. Um, you know, even, even this past year was hard. It's really hard. We have so much to be thankful for. So, and I really appreciate you all. I really do. And thanks again to the public theater and thanks to HowlRound for giving us the fabulous technology, that, you know, and hooking us up here. This is really, really an amazing group of, of people. We all are together. So thank you. Thank Thanks you. to Susan Lori Parks for being yeah. the best. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. Love you All guys. right, friends. Have a great, okay. great week. See you next yeah. week. Okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.